Hey guys, uh, so from the previous video uh, I was just letting you know that I was taking uh, measurements uh, of the bore to make sure that uh, we didn't have any issues with taper or uh, egging. Uh, I've done my own measurements and um, as you can see on the board here, hopefully this focuses in okay. Um, As you can see here, we have uh, minimal uh, egging and tapering. Um, There's cylinder number one. Let's just go back here a little bit. Whoa. Oh, bigger pattern. That's cylinder number four. Let's go over here. Cylinder number one. Um, so there are the specs that we we're looking for. Uh, 3.3880 being the minimum and 3.3887 being the uh, max at around max is uh, 4 ten thousandths and uh, taper max 4 ten thousandths as well, as well. Uh, number one looking good number two looking good. Let me see if I can just get in a little tighter on that just so there's no confusion here. There you go. Number three, uh, sorry that was number two, yeah number three and number four so what we're actually looking at here if you look along the top you've got an X and Y um, measurement. X being in line with the crank and Y being at 90 degrees to the crank. So the egging uh, right on uh, right on spec there and then you take three measurements at the top, the middle and the bottom. One ten thousandths there, one ten thousandths there and um, four ten thousandths at the top so it's all good taper looking good there as well on the different axes under under spec or within spec I should say and then going over here taper is negligible on the x axis two tenths oh, sorry uh, two ten thousandths Number three, uh, number two, negligible, looking good on the y-axis there. Virtually no egging. And uh, number one. So, moving on from here, uh, what I have done is I've started to gap my rings. I'm just going to pan over to the block. Uh, there she is. Actually, we am going to move the camera for the sake of uh, what I'm going to be doing next. Some room here. Yeah. Gearbox in the way. Oh. Okay. So let's go down here. So, actually, I want to go over here. Let's move this thing again. So I've already done cylinders one through three. Um, I am going to zoom out here a little, and I'm going to try and get this guy a little closer. You know what? I thought I was going to spend a whole bunch of time doing, you know, making sure my camera work was really good, but I've just decided I don't care. So fuck that. And uh, so these. Uh, the I'm still not happy with this camera position. Let's see if I can get this thing even closer here. I'm pretty yes, Dylan. I know you're looking for something to eat. Okay, so these are the ring gaps. Um, like I said, I've done uh, cylinders one through three, and I was going to do four with you guys live, so to speak, on the Z camera. Um, so you can see the process, whoever is interested. And like I say, this is not 
well, I, I guess it could be an instructional video. Um, I've watched a lot of YouTube videos on this and I'm sure there's a lot worse uh, out there. And uh, there's also a lot better. But uh, this is just my account of what I'm doing. Take it for what it is. So, number one, uh, top ring. Um, we have uh, 17 thou on the top, 23 thou on the second compression, and then the oil rails are coming in at uh, 22 thou. Uh, I hope I've got the terminology right there. Pretty sure I do. Yeah. This is a tenth, this is a hundred, this is a thousandth. So if I was to say that's twenty-three thousandths, yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 the math's right. Okay. Um, so there's number one. Number two, uh, come in very similar. Um, the top ring came in a little, little wider at um, an additional five ten thousandths. And then uh, second ring. Now, the interesting thing is the second compression rings did not require any uh, any grinding at all. Uh, so this is what they are straight out of the box, which is kind of nice. Uh, spoken to John about this, and uh, he's quite comfortable with the additional uh, with the additional gappage, so to speak. Um, if you were to do the math. Uh, Wiseco give you a method of calculating what the gap should be. Uh, typically, uh, what they say here is uh, street moderate turbo slash nitrous uh, top ring uh, should be zero zero five, so five thousandths multiplied by the bore diameter. So in our case, we have, let me find a pen here. Let's go to school. So, they are requesting on the top ring for our application, um, what do we got here? 0 0.0050 multiplied by the more uh, of the particular engine or the application that we're installing these rings on. Now in my case we've got uh, 3.3880 mm -hmm. then oh, we go over get my calculator So we've got uh, point zero zero 0.005 multiplied by, I'll make sure I'm in frame here, here we go, point zero zero 0.005 multiplied by 3.388, which gives us 0 0.0169, so that would be the target ring gap for the top ring. Still see that? Yeah. Top ring. Second ring, gaps are larger. Wiseco recommends zero point zero zero five five multiplied by the bore diameter. So we go 3.3880. Take the old calculator, 0 0.005. Still see that? Yeah, that's the problem, me. Eh? Whoops. 55. 0 0.0055 multiplied by 3.388 equals. 0 
six three. Round that up a little bit, and we end up with zero one nine. And then over, you know, back over to the other guy here, just to zero one seven. Now, if we go back to our uh, number one specs, you'll see top ring zero one seven. 0175 0175 Weissco is asking for 017 so we're beautiful there no issues there thing of beauty now on the second rings on the second compression ring I had a little bit of a scare because when I first put the uh, the compression ring into the into the bore um, of course I was looking for 019 uh, well my feeler gauges were slapping around in there like a I won't say it you know you know where I'm going anyway so uh, spoke to John told him that I was uh, experiencing uh, 23 thou on the uh, second rings 22 on that scale 22 on that one and then the fourth one we haven't done yet. Um, he's advising me that that's fine as long as the top rings are uh, within spec. Considering this engine um, blew up, or stopped working, <laughs> because of tight ring end gaps, uh, I've got no problem uh, opening these guys up and uh, maybe having just a you know a tad of uh, maybe a tad lower compression or a tad, a tad of blow by uh, no problem with that at all so the the larger specifications are, uh, are just fine so uh, I've got to actually something's just someone's just rocked up at the front door here so I've got to stop this and uh, we'll pick it up in a second but okay where were we that was just my beautiful wife coming home from a seminar um, it's actually Valentine's Day today February 14th and uh, she wanted to know if we wanted to go out for dinner tonight and I said I can't I'm grinding uh, piston rings <sighs> can't get in the way of that so I'm in the I'm in this shit house tonight, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, so these are the uh, these are the finished rings. Uh, I've put them off to the side, labelled, ready to be installed on the pistons. As you see here. So back to the task at hand. This is. Uh, good old number four so let me just set the tripod up Ooh, let, oh, Jesus let me just set the tripod up here get the camera back on Z tripod okay so cylinder number four um, actually let's just focus back over here so what we're going to be doing is uh, taking the ring, ring set and opening them up and I'm really hoping that we're in, in shot here. So here we have the oil rail expander and then the two very small thin rings sit on either side of the oil rails or oh, either side of the expander let me see if I can get a shot of that so you guys can oh hang on I'm focused in way way too much here there we go okay so what you get is a uh, 
Oop. What you get is a oil ring or oil rail, the expander, and another rail on the other side, and then these guys sit together inside a inside what one of the grooves in the pistons, like so. Then we have the top ring. And we have the second compression ring. There we go. So let me reposition. I know I say that too much, don't I? Position, reposition, it's all the same, whatever. Okay, so I'm going to take the top ring. This particular ring is identified. Um, some of these rings have dots on them. Uh, this particular one has some text here. It says N200, whatever that might mean. Not entirely sure. Let me zoom in a little bit here. So what you want to do, take the ring compress it and get it into the bore like so and then what I do is I take one of the old pistons and I push that ring down so it's square in the bore that ends up being about an inch down the bore which is fine and then we take feeler gauges so as I said before what we're looking for is uh, uh, 17 thou with a gap. Uh, I know these are going to be tight just off previous experience. And so, just to double check before I start grinding, I'll grab 17 thou, try and slide it in behind or in there, and it's not even close. So, just to give me a reference as to how far this is actually out, I'll grab. hundredth of an inch or ten thou that kind of barely goes in so I know I've got a fair amount of grinding to use I'm just going to move the engine out of the way here that'll make it easier uh, so over to my over to my grinder I'm just going to lower this Get over here like so. Move it back a bit. There we go. This is my grinder. I've uh, fastened it to the bench so it just makes things a lot easier. Grab the ring back out of the bore. And then what you want to do here, make sure you face up the correct way. And you only want to grind one end of the ring. We've got a, uh, a factory finished uh, end here. Why would we? Uh, there's no reason for us to uh, to grind both uh, to grind both ends. So the idea of the pins here is to align the ring in such a fashion that it's going to be square. Um, the cut's going to be square. You don't want a uh, finished uh, when the rings compressed down together like so. You want that to be, you know, a, whoops. You want that to be a butt join, as opposed to having an angle in there. So the idea of the pins is to align the uh, the ring up against the grinding wheel, hold it in place, and start grinding. Always grind in from the outside to the center of the ring uh, to avoid any sharp edges that may occur on the outside, and to also preserve. Um, there's a special uh, finish here that Wiseco put on these rings and you want to try and keep that there. Now I know I'm a mile out so I'm going to give her a fair amount of grinding here holding the ring in place and applying pressure towards the grinding wheel itself you can buy all sorts of grinding wheels, you can get electronic ones that have got dial gauges attached to them make it a little easier I guess but if you do it if you're doing it day after day after day, then 
Yeah, sure. A couple of hundred bucks. This one was like seventy dollars, I think, sixty bucks from. Uh, I'm trying to remember where I bought it from. That really cool place in the states that I wish we had here. Summit, Summit Auto Parts. So give us some grinding, get going. I know I got to take off a ton here, so I'm just gonna keep going here. Okay. So once I'm done, I take my handy dandy AC Delco parts cleaner, uh, give her a spray on each end, and then what I've been using is uh, coffee filters, uh, because these contain absolutely no lint at all. Um, for precision parts, this is the way to go, like for bearings, um, anything that has close tolerances. Where you don't want any lint or uh, fabric particles getting in there. Make sure she's nice and clean. Deburr it. You can usually just do that with your fingernail here. The most important thing, of course, is the outside edge, just making sure there's no remnants there. And then once again, we swing around to the 